بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد This month of Ramadan is a Mubarak month, a month of forgiveness, a month of connecting with Allah Jalla Jalalu Amma Nawalu. What is Tawbah? Tawbah is acknowledgement that you made a mistake. If a child has done a wrong and they are proud, they are arrogant, they carry on what they are doing, how will the parent react? Compared to a child who said, you know what, Abba, Ami, sorry, I was wrong, I made a mistake. That's all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So, move to Zain al-Abidin used to say that in the worst places on earth, in the toilet, a person is relieved in oneself and the thought comes to his mind, Ya Allah, what a life I've led. Ya Allah, what wrong have I done? He said, in the worst of places, Allah will purify him. Allah will cleanse his heart. So just acknowledgement in that, Manik, ya, ya, what did I do? Hakim Akhtar rahmatullahi used to say that when we go to the Kaaba, the Baytullah, and we in front of the Ghilaf, Multazam, crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we'll tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, I don't have anything, I have come with nothing, except one thing which you love. And you love to forgive, Ya Allah. So I've brought bags and bags and bags and bags of sins, Ya Allah, that's all that I have to my record. That's how our Sheikh says, when somebody says, Ya Allah, what wrong did I do? He said, we should be ashamed of ourselves. And you know, when something goes wrong, then we think, okay, what guna did I do? He says, we're supposed to think, what right did I do in my life? The fact that a person is thinking he's been right his entire life, and now one day in his life he did some wrong, that this is happening to him, he said that mindset alone is dangerous. So we need to check ourselves all the time. This mizaj and this mindset of forgiving others and seeking forgiveness, those are two important traits of a believer. Now on our doorstep is the last 10 nights of Ramadan, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a special quality to this ummah. When Nabi alayhi salam was saddened of the short life of this ummah and seen how they excelled, he narrated to Sahaba a story of a righteous man from the Bani Israel who spent a thousand months in jihad. Other narrations, four pious people who spent 80 years of worship in ibadah. Hazrat Ayyub, Zakaria, Iskil, and Yusha alayhi salatu was salam. Then Jibreel alayhi salam descended and came with the glad tidings. It's the same night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the initiation of the creation of Adam alayhi salam happened. Isa alayhi salam was lifted. Uh, the Bani Israel's Tawbah was accepted. In this night, Tanazzalul Malaika to our Ruh, that Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam with the angels, descend and they come down and they make dua for mercy. Whoever is busy in ibadat on this night. And Salamun hiya hatta mathula il fajr. These malaika invoke peace. So this is a night to keep the night alive. Whoever's hearts are alive on these nights, then their hearts will be alive in akhirat also. So the first meaning of peace is, one is the external peace, whether physical, whether with regards to our family, uh, property, possessions that we have, the environment, etc. External peace has been invoked. Secondly, internal peace. And thirdly is, the actual peace a person will get is when he finds Allah and Allah makes his maghfirat. So, these are the nights where we need to secure the salam, this peace. Man arafa qadar al-layl. Whoever understood the value of a night will understood the value of the night of power. So we've been told, مَا قَوْمَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِمَانًا وَإِحْتِسَابًا Whoever stands up on this Mubarak night, خُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That his sins will be forgiven. مَنْ حُرِمَهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمَ الْخَيْرِ كُلَّهُ Whoever has been deprived of the barakat and the blessings of these nights, وَلَا يُحْرَمُ خَيْرَهَا إِلَّا مَحْرُومٌ They are very unfortunate. Whoever has been deprived of these Mubarak nights, 
they are very unfortunate. So in Hadith Al-Quds, Allah SWT says, Ya bna Adam, tafarraq al-ibadati. Oh, my beloved servants, free yourself from my worship. Free yourself from my ibadat. Am la sidraka ghinan. I will fill your hearts with wealth, with contentment. Wa asudda faqrak. And poverty will end. Wa illa. And if you don't do this, ma la tu yadayka shughlan. I'll keep you busy in other things that are not important. Whatever your objective of creation, you won't be fulfilling that. You are doing everything else that's insignificant. وَلَمْ أَسُدَّ فَقْرَكْ And your poverty will remain for you, for, on you. مَنْ جَعَلَ الْهُمُومَ هَمَّنْ وَاحِدًا Whoever's worry and concern is one. هَمَّ آخِرَ The concern for akhirat. كَفَاهُ اللَّهُ هَمَّ دُنْيَاهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice for all the needs of his dunya. And whoever makes his dunya a priority and a focus, لَمْ يُبَالِ اللَّهِ فِي أَيِّ أَوْدِيَاتِيَهَا هَلَكَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have any concern. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signs a disclaimer for this person. I don't want to have anything to do with you. مَنْ كَانَ هَمُّهُ طَلَبَ الدُّنْيَا Whoever's concern is dunya. فَرَّقَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْلَهُ all his work, his duties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will distribute it. Work that needed to be done in one day will take him one month. The work doesn't get finished. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches the barakah in time. وَجَعَلَ الْفَقْرَ بَيْنَ عِنَيْهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts poverty in front of him. So no matter how much wealth, how much assets, how much possessions he has, but perpetually he feels he's poor. There's a need to increase and make effort for dunya. And Allah will only give him illa ma kutiba lahu, whatever has been destined from him, Allah will only give him that amount. وَمَنْ كَانَ هَمُّهُ طَلَبَ الْآخِرَةِ And whoever's desire is akhirat, جَمَعَ اللَّهُ شَمْلَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all his efforts, work that would take one, two, three, four months, Allah does it in a week, Allah does it in a day. A person will be baffled how so much work got done in so short time. And that's through the barakah, and mudakaras have been made in the past. Now to get it secret, the raz of uh, barakah in time, when our fikr and our concern is akhirat, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that. وَجَعَلَ الْغِنَا فِي قَلْبِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts contentment in his heart. وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَ And Allah will give him dunya, it will run behind him, disgraced. So one is rizqan karima, where risk will come with honor, and one is risk will come with disgrace. So when a person has concern for akhirah, like Haji Bay Badiya Rahmatullah used to explain, he said when you feed your chickens, either you put it in a bowl and you feed them, or you distribute the seeds. They'll get the same amount of seeds. The only difference is the one that is scattered has to run everywhere else. So if a person makes his focus akhirat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in his dunya. Man asbaha wa dunya akbara hammihi. Whoever wakes up in the morning and his concern is just dunya, 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 alzam Allahu qalbahu arba'a khisal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put four punishments on him. Number one, hamman la yinqathihu abada. He will have grief, he will worry, stress, anxiety. All the time you see this person, Hey, I got problems, I got stress, I got parishani. That's first azab. Secondly, وَشُغْلًا لَا يَتَفَرَّغْ مِنْهُ abada. He'll be busy all the time. He will not find any free time. Whenever you, hey, I am busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Quran, no time. Masjid, no time. Tajud, no time. For dunya, he's got a lot of time. But for deen, no time. He'll always be busy. So that's an azab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we forever engage in dunya and we're not in engage in deen. Number three, وَفَقْرًا لَا يَبْلُغْ غِنَاءُ أَبْدًا Allah will put poverty in his heart. He will never achieve wealth. He will never achieve contentment. So even if a person has outside external factors to show he has dunya, but internally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will snatch that contentment. And last, number four, وَإِمْلَالًا لَا يَبْلُغْ مُنْتَهَاهُ أَبْدًا And he will be tired and he will be exhausted and he will be running around. 
and he will never see peace of mind always he'll be busy and busy and busy and he will tire himself for dunya he will not tire himself for deen la ta'tiyannakum ba'di dunya ta'kulu a time will come in my ummah that dunya will eat your iman kama ta'kulu an-nar al-hatab like how fire consumes wood this dunya will consume my ummah so these are mubarak nights let us search for them taharraw laylat al-qadr fi al-watr that search for the night of qadr in the odd nights min al-ashr al-awakhir min ramadan from the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So ideally it's the last 10 nights. Different narrations. Nabi alayhi salam was going to come and inform Sahaba once. Fatalaha fulan wa fulan. Some Sahaba were fighting. Farufi'at. So that night was taken away. So Nabi alayhi salam said. Faltamisuha. So search for it. It's in the last 10 nights. Probably the 5th, the 7th, the 9th. Some reports come of the 23rd, some say 24th. Ibn Masood is of the opinion, 27th, radiyallahu an. Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullahi was of the opinion of the 21st. Imam Ahbad bin Hanbal and Malik, rahimahumullah, say the last 10 nights of the odd nights. Shah Waliyallah, rahmatullahi was also of this opinion. Last 10 nights of Ramadan, but the odd nights. Generally, from the combination of all the riwayat and that our ulama say, not necessarily it is the odd nights, but it is the last ten nights and every year it rotates. Every year it rotates. So let us make an intention. Worst case, if you cannot manage 25, 27, 29th night. If a person can manage every odd night. If Allah gives somebody tawfiq, then all ten nights of the last ten nights, let us excel in ibadah. Some of the signs of uh, Laylatul Qadr is the night will be serene, will be quiet, it will be a shining night, it will not be very hot or no cold, it will be tranquil, peaceful, the sun will rise without some radiant beams of light, like how when we look at uh, a full moon, we see the radiance but not blinding. Like that also, the sun will look like a full moon. Other pious people in the past have seen different signs where they say that they tasted the ocean water, it was sweet, etc. For us to know just the last 10 nights, these are opportunities in Mawaqi' to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us see how we can utilize this time properly. There was a farmer who found a box in his farm. He was elated when he opened it. He found some stones. He got happy. There are toys for children. And we can pelt the crows, etc. He utilized the entire box. One day his friend from the city came and seen one of the kids playing with the stone. So he said, when you go to the city, value ate it. So he went to the city. He went to a jeweler's store. As he entered the store, he showed the jeweler the stone. The jeweler shocked and surprised. Then he looked at the farmer, his de dilapidated clothing, etc. And said, this person here, I can give you a low value. So he said, 100,000. When the farmer heard the value of that stone, he started crying. The jeweler realized that he gave him a low value. Maybe he knows the value of the stone. So he said, 150,000. The farmer started crying even more. He said, people outside will see and they'll know that I'm exploiting this person here. So he said, 200,000. The farmer fell unconscious. After he regained consciousness, the jeweler said, I offered you 100, you cried, 150, you cried more, 200, you fell unconscious. If it's a small amount, I'll increase the value. The farmer said, I'm not worried about the value. My concern is that... I had an entire box of these stones. Now I have nothing left. I have nothing left. If I had that box, I would have been set for life. Like that, every second in our life, every moment, every breath is a jewel. In the year after, when we see the value of every subhanallah, every tasbih, every dua, 
every ayah of Quran, every rakat of salat, every chapter of knowledge that we learned, then like that farmer, we should not cry. Because when we see the value, we will have a lot of regrets. So let us make an intention. These are Mubarak nights. We should spend these nights and keep it abad. Con con continuing with Tahajjud, and we were discussing in these Mubarak nights as well, as at Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an, when people used to go sleep, from فَيُسْمَعُ لَهُ دَوِيٌّ كَدَوِيٍّ نَحْ in his household, you could hear the sound of the buzzing, like how bees buzz. Tal fajr, tal subah, you could hear that sound because he was busy in tilawat, tahajjud, amal, etc. Shaddad bin Aus, when he used to go to his bed, yataqalla mithla al habbi fil miqla, like how seeds are fried in a pan and you see them restless and shaking and trembling. He would tremble and shake. And he would say, Allahumma inna dhikra nari kad mana'ani nawm. The fear of Jahannam has removed my sleep. The fear of Jahannam has removed my sleep. And you would stand up and spend the entire night in Ibadah. Ta'awuz, when he used to go to lie down on the bed, he would become restless. And then he would shake and tremble. He would stand in Salat and he'll say, the fear of Jahannam has removed the sleep of the pious, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdul Aziz ibn Abi Rawad, when night used to come, used to come to his bed. He would take his hand and spread it over the bed and say, Innaka lalayinun. You are very soft. You are very comfortable. Wallahi lafil jannati al minka. But Jannat is more soft and more beautiful, and you would spend the entire night in Ibadah. As a Silla bin Asham used to spend the entire night in Ibadah, and when he used to come in the morning, he used to say, Ilahi laysa mithli yatlubul Jannah. Ya Allah, I'm a seeker for Jannah. Ya Allah, if you think so, my Ibadah is not good enough for Jannah. Walakin ajirni bi rahmatika min al nar. At least save me from the fire of Jahannam. The wife of Masruk, she used to see Masruk in Salat. Wallahi in kuntu la ajlisu khalfahu fa'abki. She says, I used to cry when I used to see him standing so long in Salat that his feet used to swell. Junaid used to say that I seen nobody more like Sirri. That approximately 98 years had passed and he was not seen lying down on a bed illa fi illa til maut, except at the time of death. It is said about Abu Muhammad al-Jariri that a person says, I spent with him six years. Falam yanam walam yatakallam. I never seen him sleep or speak to anybody or relax or recline on a pillar ever in those six years. So these were the amal of the abideen, the friends close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us see how we can spend this night in these amal. The dua for today is, Allahumma anta khalaqtani wa anta tahdini wa anta tut'imuni wa anta tasqini wa anta tumituni wa anta tuhyini. Whoever reads this dua morning and evening, and the Rawi Hazrat Samura ibn Jundub radiallahu anhu says, I've heard this from the Nabi of Allah many times. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu many times. Umar radiallahu anhu many times. Whoever reads this dua morning and evening, Allah will make him from the mustajabu da'wat. His duas will get accepted. He says, I met Hazrat Abdullah ibn Salam and I told him the same narration. And he said, these are the same words which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Musa alayhi salam. فَكَانَ يَدْعُو بِهِنَّ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ سَبْعَ مَرَّاتٍ And he used to say this every day seven times. So if we can seven times in the morning, seven times in the evening, فَلَا يَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ إِيَّا And this person who makes this is ma'mool, whatever he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant him his dua. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين